Hello again, YouTube. This is the truth, man. Giving you the truth. Out here working. Y'all got to excuse me. Uh, it's what I be doing most of the time. And uh, who has time to be in a barbershop for five hours? I don't. But nonetheless, on this one, I want to talk about broke man scrap guy to not being broke or a woman we gonna start from step A we are gonna start from step A and we are gonna go try to go through the age groups and trust me I know what it's like to be broke I've experienced it many days many occasions and sometimes being being broke don't always necessarily mean you poor. Sometimes it just means that uh, you your money is spent. Like, and it could be because of you. It could be in part because of them peoples and the little moves they do. It's a lot wide range of things that can cause it. But we going from point A to as far as many points as we could get in a short period of time. So point A, you're a sick, you're a kid, right? You're a kid. You get a job. Somebody give you money. You're a kid, like under the age of work or beginning stages of work. Every time somebody give you some money, save something that you will not use unless you're trying to bring in more money or it's an emergency. Save money that you ain't going to use for non-emergencies, non-wealth building. Just keep it. Like if you got thieves all in your family, stuff like that, you know, find a person you could trust and tell them where it is. Then you know only one person know where it is. So if it come up missing, you know who had something to do with it. Or if something happened to you, they'll be able to get it. So that's the first thing. Like people, when you ain't working, when you young, yeah, I don't care if you eight. If somebody give you twenty dollars, save five and do fifteen with the rest of what you want. Like, and and even if you go into the movies or something, let's say your parent gave you a lot of money, you only eight. You only need to spend fifty dollars at the movie theater. That's developing bad habit. Or fifteen. Somebody give you fifty dollars here, go to the movies. Like, okay, well. I'm going to put up $7 or something like that. Pick an amount and put it up and then go to the movies and stay within the rest of your money and try not to empty your pocket out. Because see, here's what happened. The habit, you don't want your eyes to see you emptying your pocket, like becoming broke, like completely emptying your wallet. Don't do that. You're not going to press these girls. Don't do that for them. And don't do it for you. Always keep some money in your wallet. And when you're saving that money, take it out of your wallet and put it in your, your account or wherever you save your money. But don't ever empty your wallet completely out. That's a bad, that's going to send off a bad vibe to you. Don't do that. Next. Okay, like you let's say you old enough to work. You old enough to work. Don't never let nobody take all of your money. Like like you 16, 17, it's okay to help your mother and father if they made bad choices and and, and you know they need a little help. You really should. Like you should be like here. If you know they struggling, you should be like here. Cause I've seen it happen. When you help people freely and voluntarily with the right intentions, that money comes back fast. That's what you talking about harvest. Harvest don't always come from these crooked preachers. Sometimes harvest come when you help a non-crooked person or you help somebody in need. So don't give all of your money up. Save I would say like for ten dollars out of every hundred that you make. So if you make two hundred save twenty dollars minimum and just think you making 200 a week 
10 weeks straight you saved $20, now you got $200. You got $200. And if you want a next thing, next thing, if you want to buy something, budget a amount out of every time you get paid to put aside. Do not pay cash for that thing right away. So if you want some Jordans, it's okay to want Jordans, $200. Just be like, okay, I'm gonna put up $20 10 times. And two months from now, you got $200. You might not even want the Jordan no more. You might want another pair of shoes for 200 or less. That's how you gotta, you gotta start doing these things because I'm telling you, when you start doing broke stuff, and even if you was a, like a lot of former drug dealers will tell you, they go through their period of struggle because they have to learn how to manage short money, smaller money. So, you want to set aside for the things that you want that are costly. Now, if it's something that's cheap, like $10, $15, $40, just go ahead and buy it. Buy yourself something you want. That'll make you feel better about your work, being able to buy stuff. But you want to be able to save stuff. You want your eyes to see your money growing. And that expensive stuff that you want, you want to put aside for over a certain period of time. Whether it's a car. Like, let's say you, okay, you you 16, you learning how to drive. You should be saving up for your car right then. Now, let's move on to the next age group. Because 16, you more than likely somebody helping you. When you hit 20, 21, 22, let's talk about the 20s. You want to start investing. Don't be one of them people who think not to invest. You want to start investing on something. You got cash up, you can buy, be buying shares. Buy shares. When you get to $1,000, you can either leave it on there or take it off and put it somewhere else and start over. By doing so, you programming yourself to learn how to accumulate money instead of just spending it. Don't be the dude who buy earrings and all this stuff just so you can get some. Listen, you could do that yourself. I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be nasty. I'm just saying. Or there's somebody out there where you don't need all of the, the trickets to get her. So don't be spending all your money trying to look fresh. You want to be fresh, get fresh over time. But wait, hold on, hold on. The phone went dark. You want to be fresh, get fresh over time. Don't you make four hundred? You don't spend two fifty on clothes. Don't do that. Don't do that. In fact, remember the ten percent rule, and that's the richest man in Babylon. Always save at least ten percent untouchable, other than emergencies or guaranteed or or good prospects of accumulating wealth so if you make 400 every time you get that 400 you should be taking 40 out to uh save get you some rubber bands paper clip just keep looking at it grow that's gonna make you want to keep doing it and don't try to buy nobody what women don't like you so what forget them they probably stink probably got std they, they probably got other boyfriends, probably loose. They ain't, ain't nothing perfect about them that should make you want to just, just buy them and spend all your money on them. Don't do it. Remember Eve. Nobody will ever be more righteous and more virtuous than Eve was, and look what she did. So don't be spending all your money on these chicks. And if you get married, go the cheapest route possible. In case it don't work, don't be buying no $8,000 ring, okay? If you want to buy an $8,000 ring, the rule of thumb, what's the rule of thumb? 10%. So if you got 80,000 cash and you want to buy an $8,000 or $8,000 ring, go ahead. But if you only got 8,000, why in the heck would you do some stupid stuff like that? And stop catering to these women. The most important thing y'all need to focus on, if that's who you want to be with, is building your, your, your wealth and getting a house. You know? These are the things you want to focus on. You don't want to focus on just trying to impress her. Because first of all, if you want to go by tradition, 
Her father's supposed to pay for the wedding. But anyway, who keeping score? Next, like I say, you want to save. You want to invest something. You want you want to, I would say, get some stocks with dividends on them. And when your dividend is high enough, make it where you will receive the check. Get you some Bitcoin. You can get right up to Coinstar and buy Bitcoin. Like, you'll get the receipts. You can just keep getting the receipts. Then you go to CoinMe or whatever, and you uh, set up an account, and you can put it in your wallet. I mean, there's so many things you could do. In terms of car, I would say if you want a brand new car, you need to save up a large down payment. It's perfectly fine. Where you're not paying all your money towards this car. Get yourself a lower car note or save up cash. Be like, okay, I'm going to wait till I got 30000 to put towards a car, even if it take you five years. And then go buy the car you want. So oh, it's going to depreciate. Do you want the car or not? If if you want really want something, then you worry about that depreciation stuff later. But if you want a brand new car, don't worry about depreciation. That's going to happen. You can't stop it. So these are things you want to do. Like if you, you say, well, I can't save money. This, now this what I'm going to say it go for all age groups. Determine a set amount that you want to save or you can save every day, even if it's just $1. So you get paid weekly, you say, I can't save. You should be able to save no less than $7 a week. I mean, it's not a lot, but that should be the, the beginning, like $7 a week or more. That's $1 per day. That's $365 per year. 10 years, you got $3,600. You know, emergency come, you got the money to handle a lot of emergencies. So you again, the most important things is to to keep people in line. Don't let them spend all your money. Save your money is the most important thing. Invest something and be patient with your purchases. That's how you you know, that's how you can help yourself, you know, in terms of being broke. Save, invest, be patient with your purchases. Don't let nobody put pressure on you to spend meaningless money trying to impress. Them. You know, when you when you want those large purchases, like I said, give it time, because once you get the money, you might not even want it no more or you might want something different. So something that costs 200, like maybe a pair of shoes, that's twenty dollars for 10 weeks. That's like two and a half months. You know. Or you can buy you a little cheap pair of shoes, this new, and say, okay, I still want these shoes. $20 a week times 10, that's 200. It's two and a half months. This is where people mess up. And don't, if you had kids, do not be spending all your money on kids. You see Giannis was at Disneyland, right? Disneyland is for Giannis. It's not for people that's trying to get money. So this, let's say average trip is 4500 At minimum, if you're in a rush to go there, you should have more than double that. So if you ain't got 9000 it's probably not time for you to go to Disneyland. You know, this is just something for you to think about. It's your own choices. You know, find a cheaper uh, trip that your kids are like. But don't be taking little babies. You you only got ten thousand. You spending it on Disneyland, and they ain't gonna even remember. I mean, if you're not rich yet, don't do that, man. That's that. The reason why I bring up this stuff is because this the type of stuff, and the attitudes and the mindsets just gonna keep you poor. Those are the bad habits that's gonna keep you poor. Impatient spending, not saving, is the most important. And when you save, you got to be cutthroat. You got to be like, man, it better be hell over high water for me to spend this. You don't save 300 and then spend it on a cable bill. Let that joke get cut off. You can't pay it and all you got is 300 in your savings. Why would you take your savings for leisure? 
you know, sometimes those kids, that, but, but to solve all of that, make sure you got more than that. Make sure you save it more than that. Then it won't be an issue. But if it becomes an issue, you should not be using your savings on your bills. Cause think about it like this. If something happened to you, them bills still going to come. If something happened to you, that car note is going to come. You should always have enough money where if you overextend yourself with cars and stuff, you can go buy a cheap car and you still got one. So if you say, okay, I'm going to put 3000 towards cars. I'm going to put $30 up per week. That's what? 10 weeks is 300. That's like 1500 or something like that. So if you make it a little more, let's say you say, I'm going to put up my car fund. I'm going to put up $60 a week. Then when stuff happens, you got the money, but we don't put up. That's why we always in trouble. Oh, uh, can I borrow money? I know, man. I know what I'm talking about. I spent just ridiculously for years, man. I know what I'm talking about, man. If you can listen to anybody, you can listen to me. All the ridiculous spending. I've been working since I'm 16. I really should be a millionaire by now. But bad spending. As a matter of fact, let's go here and close Grant Navarre uh, mentioned in his video, he coined it, the $27.40 rule. That's $10,000 a year. So basically, on average, if you save $197 a week, you'll be saving over $10,000 a year. And let's say you did that for 10 years. You got $100,000. That's your living arrangement. That's your house rent. That's that's you can do a lot with a hundred thousand. You can get a nice apartment and you got the cushion to pay it while you making more money, putting it back on your cushion. This is some of the things that will keep you from being broke. And like I say, saving, saving, no matter what if you making money or somebody giving you money, even your taxes, you get a, a settlement of some kind. You should not be spending the whole thing. You win the lottery, put something up every time. I'm telling you, it'll eliminate that being broke. Anybody that's been working for years and they broke, I already know. You ain't been saving nothing. Because remember, $27.40, let's, let's add it up right quick. Let's $27.40. $27.40 times seven. Uh, it's actually $191. $191 per week. Some of y'all make $1,000 per week. You can't save $191? A lot of this stuff come down on you. And then, as far as divorce, your wife is is is, is been a you-know-what and been that way for a while. You should have the money to where if you know she the type you're going to hit you for alimony, all this, all that. You should have the money because you should be saving the whole time against everything, including marriage going right. You should be saving like your marriage going to fail from day one. And if she the type, oh, we need it, no, 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 you need to get her in check. Or if you that type and she trying to tell you, you need to listen to her. Because there's been a couple of times where I should have listened to my wife. I should have. But if she's right and you not, you need to listen to her. What's best? Do that. Thanks for watching. This is the truth, man. The channel is no matrix. No work, working every day, but yet you don't got no money. That's matrix, babe. That's going to trap you in the matrix, not having money. No simping, all subjects channel. Like to thank my new subscribers. Like, keep commenting. I appreciate all the comments, good and bad. You can call me a clown, whatever. Thanks for the comment. And keep tuning in. And I'll see you tomorrow with more videos.